Yes, no. Brandon is here. Okay, so we have all the counselors then. Yep. Okay, let's go ahead and call the meeting to order for the July 7th, 2020 council meeting. Can everybody please stand for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have to get a roll call, Heather, please. Art. Here. Brandon. Here. David Jones. Here. Katie Norton. Here. Leslie Pearson. Here. Junior Drago. Here. And Sandy Toms. Here. And then um, we have a lot of people on Zoom tonight. So um, if we could um, recognize, I have, um, Heather, if you want to name off who you see so far, and if we miss someone, could you please state your name? So Heather, go ahead and name who you see. I have Alex Hobbs, somebody with the name of Asus. I'm assuming it might be a phone or a tablet. That's Paul Beagle. Paul Beagle. Okay. Um, Barry Byler, Cheryl Tallman. Uh, I have a David Norton and a David and Katie Norton. Are they both on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Erica Lassiter. I have a Galaxy 7 Note. Not quite sure who that is. Uh, Who's looks on like a Galaxy 7 Note? Uh, mm -hmm. they just, oh wait, there they are. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Leah Harris. Somebody um, identified as Jay. Uh, Joe Taylor. Juan Almagheri, Carl Sprower. Um, I have a Kathy, but it just says Kathy's iPad. Madam Mayor. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just a, 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 So we have a list of the participants that are gonna be in the recorded meeting. Uh -huh. I wonder if that's gonna be the easier way to do this. Because we keep, ha I, I keep having people uh, adding to the, to the meeting. So we've got 36, and, and just another request, so. All right, so as long as, I just wanna make sure Heather is getting them all, too. Okay, so let's move on then. If, if As long as Heather's got them all, do you have them, Heather? Okay. So let's move on to the approval of the minutes for June 16th, 2020, the special meeting. Everybody get a chance to read those? If so, I need a motion on the floor. Move to approve. Do I have a second? Second that. I'll second that. Who was that that second? Leslie. Okay. It's been moved by Art and seconded by Leslie to approve the June 16th, 2020 special meeting. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion passes 7-0. Next is the approval of the June 29th, 2020 special meeting. Minutes, do I have a motion? So sure. moved. Moved by David and seconded by Junior second. um, to approve the June 29th, 2020 special meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion passes 6-0. We've already went through Sandy, all the- Sandy, can end. you please repeat who seconded that? Pardon me? Can you please Junior. repeat who seconded that? Junior did. Junior, okay. So um, we've already gone through basically all the introductions. So next we're going to go down to the financial port report ending in June 30th, 2020. Marta, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that? Can't hear you, Marta, you're on mute. Okay, now let's try it again. Um, I just wanted you to, to point out that uh, for Fund 520 and Fund 530, which are our water and sewer bond payments, um, you will see that our fund balance was a negative. That means that we collected less in 
tax bond revenues than what our payment was. So that's why those, um, you see them as a negative balance. And why, why is that? Do you know? Um, there's a lot of variables that go into it. It has to do with, you know, what the tax assessor assesses on property values and what the tax rate that is set for the year. Um, and so like the tax rate for this coming fiscal year, which started July 1st, um, that was set back in, I believe it's October by the tax assessor. And those are the figures that we use when we approve our budget. Okay. Um, but the actual revenues collected that came in were less. And so we also don't get a list of delinquent accounts if people haven't paid their property taxes. Um, because we're a cash basis, that just means we report the money that actually comes in. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for Marta? Seeing none, I need a motion on the floor. I move to approve the budget. Second. Okay. It's been moved by Junior and seconded by Art to approve the financial report ending June 30th, 2020. Do I have any questions? Seeing none, okay. can I have a roll call, please? I want to make a comment. Okay. This is your last one for this year. So you need to kind of look at it and see how you did compared your budget compared to what you budgeted for, things like that. So okay. uh, we ended up looking really well. So. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I have a roll call, please? Okay. Leslie? Yes. David? Yes. Okay. Katie? Yes. Art? Yes. Junior? Yes. Brandon? Yes. Sandy? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Next, um, we have some pre-arranged presentations. And just for um, reference, the pre-arranged presentations should take no, no, no more than two to two and a half minutes. Um, so Samantha, you're first. Can you hear me? Barely. Uh, let me see. Uh, That's better. Better? Okay. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys for giving me a chance to speak. My name is Samantha Aldridge and I live in Boardman with my husband, Brandon Aldridge. We've lived in here for uh, quite a few years um, and we live in the urban growth boundary. So that's what I wanted to speak here today is about the limits on who can or cannot take place in uh, like, for instance, the city council or running for any positions. And if you see me looking down, it's because I have my notes down here. Okay. So there are limits in the city charter saying that if you live in the urban growth boundary, you can't run for any positions. And I happen to own a house that sits literally right at the boundary. So we just meet the cutoff. Uh, and I have been taking an active interest in the Boardman community, especially since I moved my business from Hermiston to Boardman here working in my home, and I've been working out of my home for the past few months. Um, there are a few positions available. For instance, there's three positions coming up on the Boardman City Council. So that's what I'm here to speak about and is to try and put my hat in. So uh, that's about all I have to say about that. And I hope that I get to hear back on your guys' decision here soon. Thank you, Samantha. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think that my concern is that <coughs> in, or <oops. laughs> in order to, to do something like that, it's kind of unusual. 99% um, of cities do not have an urban growth boundary counselor. Um, simply because it needs to be in the city. Um, I know, and also we have to change our charter to do that. And it's a lot of work and it costs a lot of money to do that. So it wouldn't be done this year, if any, if at all this year. It's too yeah. close to November. 
So well, thank I, you. I'm not, thank I'm not moving anywhere. I do own a house in the urban growth boundary. Have you thought so, about annexing into the city limits? Um, I'm on the fence about it. Um, although we don't pay city taxes, we do contribute to a lot. Of, <laughs> sorry, that's my <laughs> We contribute to a lot of stuff in Boardman. Um, so I, I like having my house in the position where it is in the urban growth boundary, but there is, we have been talking about the possibility of annexing. Okay. Which might because, not be Because that is something that you could do is annex into into the city and then you would be, you'd have to pay your property tax, of course, and stuff like that. But then you could have a voice and you could also run for council that way. Um, there is position on the city uh, planners department for an urban both growth boundary um, yeah, position, yeah. Um, but that's the that. yeah, and it's the only position that we have for urban growth boundary. But I love that you were interested in in um, running for council. It's great that you want to be involved in the community. We like that. I'm sorry that you can't run this time, but maybe that be something on our list um, of things to do. Maybe to talk about next year but I haven't heard from the rest of the counselors. So did the, any of the other counselors have anything to say? Leslie? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just am curious what else we can do to look into this request. Um, I think it's worth considering. I would like to encourage anyone and everyone who's involved in our community to participate in leadership roles. And we do have substantial amount of opportunities coming up. I'm curious what it would take to change the and how long that would take and what the time expense and expense would be before we make a final decision or dismiss it just right away. Um, I like the idea of potentially having one person in our urban growth boundary involved and um, that I think I, I would like to consider that as an option. And I appreciate that, Leslie, but it would take about a year. You can't change your charter. It has to be voted on by the citizens. You have to write a write-up in the, the voters pamphlet and it has to be submitted to the city or to the county clerks. And um, there's a little bit of work involved in changing the charter. So I see. Well, I, I would just like to state that I think it would be worth looking into to allow that opportunity for other people who are interested to participate we do have a substantial amount of people who pay property taxes within the city limits, but also there's a large amount of people who rent here who don't pay those property taxes and they would be eligible to run. So I, I see there's a, a conflict there that I would like to understand there. Okay, so I'm a renter. I live in the city limits and I, I am the mayor. So renters can run for a, county, a, a city position. So, but that's because they live in, in the city. But we can probably put that on our list of things to do um, at our retreat or our, our, you know, we call it a retreat. It's really not a retreat, but um, at the beginning of January, we have a meeting and we can put that on something to discuss. Can Anybody else? Comment? Can I add a comment really quick? Yes. So since I do live in urban growth boundary, my neighbors, uh, they do have a lot of opinions that they feel aren't being heard very much at all. So I think it'd be really great to give them a chance to be heard, even if it's through me. Because they have a lot of great I think there's a me. fine line there as far as within the city limits and the county limits. Um, just because you're in the, the urban growth boundary um, does not give you the same rights as a city resident. It is still there's a fine line there. In order for them to get something done, you guys would probably have to talk about an annexation. So you could have more say in what the city does because right now the county controls you. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Okay. I, Samantha, thank you for speaking up. And I think that, thank you for coming and voicing your opinion. I think what Sandy's saying is, you know, there, there is a possibility there's just work that needs to be done and so I I think I agree with Leslie let's let's look into it a little bit more maybe maybe it's like Sandy said not this year but going down the road because I I think that's awesome I, uh, I do too yeah thank, thank you yeah I'm not expecting any immediate change but I'm looking forward to seeing how things pan out in the future
and we want you to keep your energy and 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 focus on helping the city we like that Art, did you have something the only thing, and the only thing i was going to say is in the case of the renter the landlord is paying the taxes that's correct that's correct that, pro that property in the city is taxed and there are pay tax payments that's that's correct there's still our tax payments david did you have anything Yeah, I, I I think it's something to work into, but honestly, I, I think that it's more it's a better option to to annex in because once again there are taxes being paid, and that's why that's why you have a voice on the council is that you're paying taxes into the into the pot. Um, but I think it's definitely something we can we can always look into and get more information from them. How about you, Junior? I think Leslie has something she wanted to say to on Okay, Les Leslie. I guess I would need some clarification. If you're paying taxes into the pot, as a, a renter, you're actually not paying taxes. Your landlord is. Well, he just said that. The landlord is paying the taxes. That's correct, and that's what Art said. So, so the landlord could effectively be a member or on council. Is that what you're saying? No. He has to live in the city. The discrepancy is saying. who's paying the taxes. Is the person who pays the taxes or is it the house of piece of property that the taxes are paying on? Gets to Barry? Pay Barry? Barry? Yes, ma'am. Could you answer that question, please? Generally, what you're going to find is the renter is paying the taxes in the form of rent. So, the property owner, by charter, if they don't live inside the city limits, still cannot be on the city council. That's right. correct. That's correct. Thank you, Barry. Junior, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Um, nothing right at this time. Okay. Again, uh, Brandon, how about you? No, not at this time. Okay. Again, Samantha, I just, again, want to thank you for voicing your opinion. And I love the energy that you have. And um, maybe we'll see you soon on the council. Okay, we'll discuss it. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, next is Alex Hobbs from Umatilla Electric. Alex, are you on the, on the line? Um, I am. I just want to make a quick clarification that I am not from Umatilla Electric. I'm uh, representing Custom Feed Services and Small okay. Truck Company. Okay, go ahead. Um, this is going to be, um, well, I just want to start out saying that I'm a decade-long Morrow County community member. And for the past two years, I have assumed the role of sixth grade educator at Eregan Elementary. However, my role here today is to present a part of our community that often goes unheard. My presentation to this board and other city officials will be a bit unorthodox this evening. Rather than conjure up all the right words, I am going to let the human experience do the majority of communicating for me. Gathered here with us, along with their families and employees, our employees and supporters of Custom Feed Services, small truck company. In the case of Custom Feed Services, many of these men and women have been with, been with Fletcher Hobbs, from the very nascent stages of his company. These men are skilled professionals. They know how to engineer hydraulic systems and build diesel motors and push their bodies beyond the brink of exhaustion to ensure our dairies are kept running efficiently. It is safe to say that they play a critical role in the supply chain, the very one that has so much attention recently. Over the years, I have seen custom feed services develop into the, one of the world's premier custom harvesting outfits. Ask any farmer or dairy manager, and I am sure they would say that claim is no hyperbole on my part. It is with this in mind that we reject any narrative that falsely claims we are opposing UEC's condemnation to deter development in Morrow County, or that we are holding out for a larger payday. For us, these families, there is simply no price that can be put on what Fletcher and his team have built and any future development goals they have planned. And yes, there are many future development goals. I urge the city council 
to formally oppose UEC's application to condemn the part of the property Custom Feed Services now calls home and continues to operate not only as team members, but vital, skilled professionals in our community. I yield my time to my husband, Fletcher Hobbs. Can you hear me all right? Hey, yes, I, I can. Came here to ask, uh, my, my name's Fletcher Hobbs, and I came here to ask for your help. Uh, thank, thank you, those of you on the council who were able to make it over to talk to me in person over the last few days. As you know, I purchased the old Taylor Transport facility on Yates Lane at the Port of Morrow exit, along with several other acres to operate my trucking firm out of and develop, starting with a facility to house custom feed services which is a harvesting company that serves the confined animal feeding operations in Morrow and uh, Umatilla counties. I sold my portion of small truck company to my partner, E.J. Almaguer III, in March of 2018 to focus on developing the neighborhood and running custom feed services. Custom feed services is one of the largest forage harvesting companies in the world. Custom Feed Services keeps about 25 full-time employees. These employees average uh, $55,000 a year and uh, have full health benefits and retirement paid for by Custom Feed Services. We also employ another 25 to 35 temporary employees four months out of the year, depending on, on the circumstances. Uh, Small truck company employs another 25 full-time employees. I don't know what their rate of pay is currently, but when I uh, was the owner, those jobs paid 55 to $70,000 a year. They need to purchase land between the Fort Amoro exit and the Main Street exit to build a server campus. For whatever reason, having adequate power at the site was not considered or, or it was not considered well enough. UEC is working to get power to the site. The most direct and inexpensive route passes through exclusive farm use land along Rippy Road by Fredrickson's family's homes and then through my neighborhood, which is zoned to be the service business area of Boardman. I and my neighbors attempted to work with UEC in finding a solution for Bay Data, but we have failed to find something that works. UEC has filed for convenience and necessity with the Public Utility Commission. If that is granted, the UEC will build the line where they want to build it and will have nothing to say. The power line, as they want it, combined with the IMAP Loop Road the city is required to build, will take most of the storage area custom feed services and small truck company needs to operate where we are located. The line will also violate the county zoning laws as well as the city of Boardman's municipal code. I've come to ask for your help because the folks that work for me and that small truck company want to keep their jobs and they want to keep them right here in Boardman. Our customers want us supporting them. We picked this place because we like it here and almost all of us have roots in this town. We believe that the city of Boardman needs us. Viable, vibrant businesses we just planted at this exit. What little we have done so far along with Perry and Cheryl's efforts have already transformed the landscape and there's a lot more to come if we manage to stay. UEC intends to stay on their course with the Public Utility Commission. I and the families I work for need you to make a resolution to oppose granting UEC convenience and necessity and send a letter stating this opposition to the Public Utility Commission. This will hey, Alex, you. Alex, I hate to cut you off, but it's, I'd let you go over your time a little bit. Um, I apologize for that. Um, I think we've all um, read your letter and we, under, we understand your position. Um, I think that um, UEC really does not want to condemn anyone's land. Um, I know that um, our city manager has talked to UEC several times, and that's not their goal. I do know that the city has talked to the attorney, our attorney, and um, we are more than willing to let, write a letter of support for you guys, if that's what you're asking. And I think that's what you're asking, isn't it, Fletcher? Yeah, well, I'm asking for, for 
commission to granting UEC convenience and necessity. Okay, so we don't have the power to stop them from doing anything. But we have the right. power to stop them, but you can say that you do not want them to do that in your town. And we can we can write a letter of support for you, the business owners there. Um, legally, that's all we can do. And I think um, Karen Karen Pettigrew has a little bit more to say on that, don't you, Karen? That is not correct. Karen, what? And can you say something a little bit what what you told me earlier today? Well, I, I think we can have our attorney write a letter that will probably be, you know, supportive of the system of the system. The supporting of the system is 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 uh, the system says you can as a city say that you oppose granting UEC that uh, convenience and necessity. You uh, you totally have the right to say that. Anybody has the right to say that. If the city says that as a city, it will be a powerful message that UEC needs to find another way to do this. And the fact of the matter is they can find another way to do it. And it is not a big deal to say that it's going to be impossible or expensive to do to run it somewhere else. Uh, it's like saying that other cities run off of magic. Fletcher, can I interrupt you for a minute, please? You interrupted Karen what she was saying. So let her finish what she had to say, please. Okay, Fletcher and I can talk about this because I think I would want to call the attorney because I, I personally don't know about the convenience and necessity part. If, if, I, if we committed to that and the PUC, they're going to rule however they see because they see if they, my understanding is their job is to see whether we need more power on this side of the community. They also are to weigh uh, public's approval of putting the power line in the location that, that UEC is requesting that we put. Right. And that's very important and it's, it's not, not a complicated thing. That and we have gathered the public here today, public that will be directly affected by this power line. Um, we can't, we can't give up. That's why we're here. We're, we're, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I just have run out of options and I can't talk in circles anymore. And we don't want you to talk. We don't want you to talk in circles either. Um, uh, we just don't want that to happen. But we, as a city, have to also be careful, and we have to consult all, our attorneys on what we need to do to protect ourselves and to protect you guys too. So Karen is doing her due diligence, and she's doing what she's supposed to do. And as soon as she gets that information, she can talk with you to see what else we can further do. With that, that will accomplish nothing with all, with all due respect. Uh, well, there's nothing else that we can do. We can write a letter of support for you guys. I just don't think that there's... Andy, yes, David. So, first of all, I think, I don't see any reason why we can't write a letter of support for Fletcher. We, right, we I mean, can. Our job as city councilors and as the city is to stand up for the businesses in, this, in, in the city. And right. by writing a support in and behalf or for, I mean, I'm sure there's two story, there's two sides to the story, you know, but I've only heard from Fletcher Hobbs. I've, I've tried to contact it Electric and I haven't heard anything from this as of yet. So I, I honestly, I'm for, I'm for writing that letter. I think we should write that letter. I think, I we, think should we should do our support, our, our support for, for what he's trying to accomplish and do it. So in a manner that says clearly to the PUC that we are not for, for, for companies going, basically taking land from, from other companies, they're using that land. I, I agree. Junior, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, I, and I agree with that. I think that a letter could be written. Um, I don't, I know that if I owned the property and they were trying to take some from me that I would not want that to happen either. I, I am behind Fletcher on his goal. Um, and I think that we are working towards an end in that. We are looking for alternate uh, ways of getting around it. Unfortunately, what I understand, and I could be wrong, but Umatel Electric has a obligation to supply power 
to whoever needs it. And they have to do that in the matter that they deem best. Um, but that being said, it should be able to be done without condemning property. We don't want anybody's property condemned, period. That's just not, that's threatening to people and that's not why they buy, buy their land. It's just not right. So let Karen work on um, uh, a letter with the attorney and um, I guess we could have a special meeting, Karen, couldn't we? Just well, see. first of all, I thought I'd seen Robert Eckenrodes or somebody from UEC on the thing tonight. Would they yes. like, do they have anything that they would like to propose here tonight or? Robert? Yes, thank you, Mayor and Counselor. Um, my name is Robert Eckenrodes. I'm the General Manager and CEO of Umatal Electric. It is not our wish to condemn any landowners. We have an obligation to serve our members. We have an obligation and commitment to our new members who have applied for service. And we certainly have empathy for the communities that which we serve. We're trying to protect all parties. And if invited by the city, I would be more than happy to make a presentation that can outline the steps we have taken to provide some clarity and some comfort to know that we have considered a number of alternates and we have made an application to the Public Utilities Commission for a certificate of convenience and necessity because we have an obligation to serve our members. This is, this is something that we take very serious. It has been successful for the communities that we serve Boardman and Hermiston and the counties, and we will be welcome the opportunity so that the council has a clear and better understanding of where we're coming from. We have no desire to condemn any property. All right, we're looking to find a an agreeable route that meets everyone's needs with the least impact. Have the landowners um um suggested an agreeable a route, Robert? make everyone happy and if so why can what why can't that be done we've been visiting we have uh, all but four landowners uh easements from four landowners acquired mayor and we've been negotiating for over a year with these individual landowners and currently the the message that i've heard in the community from the landowners are there's another route and we're asking what information they have for another route so we can investigate Hearing none, I'm prepared to visit with the council, the city council, and demonstrate how we have looked at the routes north of Interstate 84 and why they're not practical. And be happy to have that opportunity. Have this you told the landowners? Have you told the landowners why it's not practical? We are in the process of filing information with the Public Utilities Commission. It's an administrative process and our obligation is to meet with them. We have shared with the landowners, all right, uh, why we prefer to use the route that we've identified with them and have negotiated with them for over a year now. We will get that opportunity. They are participants in the PUC process and will have the benefit of the PUC staff to ensure that the right questions are asked and we are held accountable to demonstrate the need for this facility. I just think it's important that we listen to the property owners. Um, I agree. You know, they're, they're a business too. And just because they, they're, they're not VA data doesn't mean that they're not a business. So I, th I think that we need to listen to all sides and be more compromisable. Does that make sense to you, Robert? I, I agree 100%. It, it, it are the businesses such as Fletcher and others in the community that have built Boardman and have built Emotel Electric. That's However, I, I also have an obligation for even the new members. Anyone seeking electricity, I have an obligation to serve. Every house, every business, every bit, every industry we serve has received the benefit of the electric service based upon the kindness and generosity of other landowners who have signed easements in the past. We're not taking, we're, we're going to compensate. Um, Junior? 
Uh, I have a question. Are we, where are we at in capacity with power on the north side of Boardman and the south side of Boardman as far as uh, like substations for new housing and new business? The city of Boardman uh, is served by two substations, both which lie north of I-84. They're served uh, by these two circuits, one out of uh, the intersection of uh, 730 and I-84, the Coyote Springs substation, as well as a, a Port of Morrow substation um, over uh, uh, near the UEC uh, Boardman Operating Center. Those two feeders provide 100% of the power for the city of Boardman, all right? There is approximately 1,000 megawatt, 1,000 kW or one megawatt of capacity remaining on those feeders. That will probably last the city based upon its past growth record of about five to six years, at which time a new source of power will be needed. That's presented in our testimony with the PUC that the growth in the area requires a substation closer. This line will move that ability to get a source of power into the city of Boardman to not only facilitate the, the growth of the city as well as serve this member who's requested electric service. Hey. Um, Robert, I just had a question. Um, so knowing that, I, I know you, you said that in no way do we want to hurt any of the businesses or the families, that's not your intent. Um, but knowing that what um, Fletcher and Alex are saying is that it would hurt them, is this indeed still an option knowing that this could, it sounds like devastate their, their business and devastate these families? Is what an option? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't quite. It's doing the line through their their property. Um, I mean, it is. Does that does that not make the alternate an alternate route a little more attractive? Going knowing that it might hurt these people in some way. I'm concerned about that. Sure, and and this is why we have visited with uh, the Hobbs for over a year to find the least impactful route across their property. All right, um, we have worked with the city and. Uh, the IAMPS program management plan and BPA to consolidate um, these facilities so that we don't impact someone else worse. Now, it is a significant impact to the hubs. I understand that. And we have worked to consolidate and find a way to put the loop access road in conjunction with the proposed transmission line, parallel an existing transmission line with BPA rather than move it out away from the area. Um, the Hobbs own property that extends bet entirely between the BPA transmission line and Interstate 84. I cannot get west without crossing the Hobbs property. You, can't, you cannot get west, period? You have to go through their property? Between, between the BPA transmission line and the interstate, Oh, Fletcher, can you hear me? Yes. What What was your option that you gave UEC? My option is to go and uh, look for other routes for starters. I don't have the, I, it's not my burden to engineer the power line for Robert. And uh, I'm glad he was able to come and speak today because he was able to clarify that, that he's not looking for any alternative routes. The only route that they're interested in is running through through our property. And uh, it says that he tried to work with us for over a year on, uh, on obtaining an easement. Yes, we had lots of meetings where uh, we talked a lot about how it could work. And then UEC has, has ignored those efforts and just gone on about their business the way they want to go about it. The fact of the matter is that uh, one of the easiest solutions would be to just bury the line. Uh, overhead wires are disallowed in Boardman and uh, they can put it in the ground without even having to look for alternative routes. Okay, uh, thank you, Fletcher. Um, Robert, what, what do you say to that? So we have considered a, a underground transmission line. There are six cables plus spares. Uh, the cost is 
burdensome. It's up to 10 times the cost of the overhead proposed line. Uh, the proposed line is $12.5 million. At 10 times that cost, that's $120 million. Our entire value of Umatel Electric is just over $200 million. 50% of our costs would be in, would, that, that UEC has built over these past 80 years would be invest in this one line. Why would why would VA Data not help you with that? It's their service. I'm sorry, you 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 broke. Why up. would not VA Data help you with that service? Because I have an obligation to find what's practical, and while that's an option presented be, before the PUC, that's not the preferred option. All right, they may not decide to construct the facility then, and go somewhere else. That is certainly their their prerogative. That the facility's already constructed. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So Okay, thank you. Robert, David. May I ask you so Robert, thank you for coming today, by the way. I, we, we appreciate it. And we would like to hear more about your plans of how you've looked at other routes and everything like that. I, I think that that's, that's important for the council to know. Um, also though, I have you thought about just possibly going under the two properties in question? So not burying the entire line, but just going under the two properties in question. So we don't have, we're not here. We don't have to worry about this. Well, there are four property owners who have not uh, executed an easement. I would still have to go through the PUC process. And you can go through the PUC process for business, for, for properties that are not being affected, you know, that actually are working, working businesses that are not being affected by this. That's, that's, that's your prerogative, but I'm talking about the working businesses like the Hobbs that are actually being affected by this. Why wouldn't you consider, okay, you know, Hobbs, so your your business can continue. We will go under your portion of that that property. Exactly. The, the, uh, the easement for an underground transmission line would require the clear vacation of that property, whereas we have worked with Mr. Hobbs to allow him to use the property under the overhead line, all right, for his trucking business so he can use it for storage as, as I understand his request. Placing it underground would prevent that. He would not be able to build or park or do anything for that. If that's his prerogative or that's his interest, that has not been communicated to us. He's asked for us to clear the property, span the property, and even consider the option for him to build a structure underneath the property. These are compromises we have considered and have been working through his attorney to achieve. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Art? Um, can you build the line higher so Fletcher can still build his buildings? It's a, we, it's a location problem. They can't, they can't do any engineering. Let's let him answer that question. Robert, can you make those lines higher? Yes, I can, and we have made provisions to raise it up so that he can construct a building up to 20 feet tall. That's, that, again, that's the understanding I have from Mr. Hobbs of what his request is. Was that your request, um, Mr. Fletcher? Yes, that was my request. My request was that they uh, plan the loop road with the power line so that it has minimal impact and, and, and make it high enough so that we can continue on with the, the things that we plan to do with the property or that we are doing with the property currently. But and he uh, just said that they would do that. That, that he, he'll say he will do it all day long, every day, and then he can't write it down on a piece of paper and so I can't sign it. I, I'm literate and I can look at something and when it doesn't say what we talk about and it's something different, I can't sign it, and that I'm sure that I'm me. sure that if you got with him, he could he could do that for you. I, we want to come to some kind of compromise here. We don't want any anger. We don't want any fights. We want compromisable um, solutions. Mayor, Mayor Thomas, may yes. I? So, in, in in response to Mr. Hobbs, and I I, I can appreciate his frustration. Um, while UEC can can put on a piece of paper the needs that we have for the transmission line, I cannot put on paper the needs that the city has for the loop road. I, I cannot design the city's loop road. I cannot commit uh, for the city's needs or BPA's needs. 
And we, we had made provisions and attempted to communicate that, but I can't put in my easement and, and encumber the city for the city's loop road. And I, and I apologize for that, but that's something I, you know, I think you would understand we cannot do. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to get a map put together, a picture that depicts this to the best of my ability, but I, again, it cannot represent the city's uh, commitment to him. It's only my commitment to Mr. Hobbs. And that is the, the transmission right away. And there will be, I believe, adequate room to build Loop Road uh, and, and share this burden uh, between BPA, Umatel Electric, and the city. And I think that is, that demonstrates a, a fair compromise. Um, but that's my opinion. And I, I'm certainly here to listen to Mr. Hobbs and the community. That's, that's my purpose. Okay. Thank you. This has been a great conversation. Art, did you have something else you wanted to ask? If, if you solve the problem with Fletcher Hobbs, do you have the rest of the landowner's approval? I can't speak to that, uh, Mr. Kegler. Um, each landowner is individual. Um, I would hope that if um, what I can accomplish for Mr. Hobbs is satisfactory to him, it would be something that would be satisfactory to the others. The, the landowners, the four landowners are not adjacent. So I can't, I can't say what meet, meets Mr. Hobbs' uh, uh, acceptances. It would okay. be agreement to the others. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate your information. I think that it would be great if maybe um, we could get a, a presentation from you on what has been um, negotiated with the property owners. And that's something that I would be interested in seeing because none of us have seen that, but maybe Mr. Kegler. Leslie, have you seen that? Do you have a question? I have a question. May I ask? Yes. Um, I'm concerned with the deadline for the public comment period ending on the 15th. How much time do we have to have such a presentation and make a difference? We're not going to have a presentation. I would, I would imagine we'd have a presentation from Robert. So we would have to have a special meeting before. I think that the deadline is the 14th, isn't it, for the PUC deadline? Robert, do you know? I, I don't know. It, it would be on the PUC's website. I know there's been extensions granted. Um, I don't know if it applies to the public comment period. But Mr. Hobbs and the other uh, parties, the Morrow County, the Tallmans, um, and others who have intervened in the process, this administrative process, have the, the right and the ability to introduce information, which could conceivably be uh, documentation that they have acquired. Uh, I don't know if that would uh, allow the city's letter or not. I, I'm, I'm not the attorney. I just don't understand. I don't know that. But the public comment period does eventually close so that the commission can do its work, solicit, you know, testimony and investigate uh, the application and ultimately make a decision. I doubt the decision will be made uh, until much later this year, perhaps uh, later than October of this okay. year. So I think the, the parties have plenty of opportunity to introduce facts. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Sandy, this is Brandon. Yes. Hi, Brandon. Hey, uh, I believe it is the 15th. So just, you know, I'm not going to say the right wording, uh, but I just want to make sure that how we leave it is that we are going to write a letter and we can say something about we are in support of the progress of the power line but not at all supportive if there's any like condemnation or, or disagreement that, I mean, you know, something along those lines that, that they need to come to the point that we're not going to, you know, throw someone's business away. And that's kind of what I've gathered from what I've heard is that UEC wants to take so much that it's not even going to allow the, the company to keep going with, you know, Fletcher's company. So we've got to write something in that letter that says, Hey, we, we are in support of the progress of the UEC, but we absolutely will not support the condemnation of these business, you know, these uh, land. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I agree. I think all of us are in agreement there. Um, aren't we? I think we are. Yeah, I'm seeing head shake, so. 
Um, Karen, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Could could they? Uh, my name is Jonathan Tolman. Could the attorney put in the or saying that they will uh, execute a clause saying that the uh, prior lines have to be underground if they do the condemnation property? I don't uh, know, Jonathan. I don't know, Jonathan. We're going to have to get legal advice to, to find out what we can and cannot do. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, if, if he can, put I don't want to put us in a legal battle. Be, we need to consult our attorney first. Okay. And Sandy, sorry, one last thing. Yes, uh, I, yes. be I believe county commissioners did write a letter in support, so it'd be interesting. I'd like to see what their wording was. I would too. Letter. So. I would too. Don, do you, or Melissa, are you on the line? I thought I've seen Commissioner Lindsay on the line and Don Russell. Um, yeah, this is Don Russell. I'm on the line. The county did, uh, 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 we became an intervener in the, in the PUC filing, which allows us to introduce, and, I, and I'm not an attorney either, but that's my understanding. It allows us to introduce, uh, uh, evidence, um, and and uh, be part of the part of the the pub, or the the legal process. Um, our letter to the PUC uh, said that we're we're not in favor of condemnation uh, or something about condemnation as a last resort. Not, you know the. The county commission is really not in favor of condemnation either. I don't think anybody in, in the county is in favor of condemnation. Um, that's, that's sort of what we said, I think. Okay. If there's any way that you could get a copy of that letter to Karen, I'd really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Are there any more Madam questions? Mayor. Madam Mayor, this is Chief. Uh, I've asked Alex, I, it, it, to hold off because everybody else was talking. So I think he does want to say something uh, in, in closing or... Oh, okay. I guess if I, if, I, if I should say something, I guess the... What, what Robert just explained to you guys is that the power line is gonna go through my property exactly how he plans to build it unless you do something about it. And that's the bottom line. Uh, that's what I was here to explain to you. He finished explaining it to you. And uh, that is really all there is to it, so. Okay, thank you, Fletcher. We appreciate you being here tonight and I'm sorry that you're so frustrated. We're going to try and do everything we can to help you. I want you to know that we are here as the Boardman City Council and we do support our businesses as much as possible, but um, there are certain things we can do and certain things that we can't do. So we want to take up legal advice and make sure that we do it the right way. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Anybody Mayor else? Tom? Yes. Yeah, this is Commissioner Doherty. I, I just wanted to weigh in. Uh, I think it's important for the city and everybody involved to understand that uh, you cannot build the widget factory and then put this on the backs of your constituents to try and get this here. Uh, more than 18 months ago, the port came over and applied to the city to transfer that into uh, industrial property. And uh, the, city, the city planners asked at that time what was going in there. And I had been told what was going in there, but when they were asked, the port and the representatives told the city planners they had no idea what was going in there. And within weeks, uh, they, they were building the building and they didn't have access, they didn't have power, they didn't have water, they didn't have anything. And what we are doing is rewarding hideous planning. And it's got to stop. And it's, somebody's got to stand up and tell them no. And it's got to okay. start now. And it's got to start with you guys. Um, Commissioner you know, Doherty, I understand. have been beating this drum for more than a year. And, Commissioner Doherty, uh, I, I appreciate the folks coming online. Thank you. Commissioner Doherty, I understand your position, but you know, this was a learning process for all of us. The city's never had a commercial property in the city. So to be, to, to, to say what you did, I don't appreciate it because it was a learning process for us too. Um, but thank you for your opinion. Um, okay. So, um, Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. Madam Mayor, uh, uh, 
it looks like Commissioner Lindsay asked if the if the council could take a formal vote regarding condemnation for some clear direction. As like a clear vote for not condemnation for the property, is that what she's asking? She needs to be more clear. Commissioner Lindsay, could you yeah. Hi, Mayor Toms. This is Commissioner Lindsay. I just to weigh in with some form of a formalized vote as the um, county commission it would just be nice to understand for you know for certain what the council's stance is if, if you're as a group opposed to con condemnation or calling it as a last resort or just a formal vote to get a clear understanding it, it just kind of helps us know where to support you all from our our position on this as well thank you so you just want us to make a vote saying that we are opposed of condemnation for the property? I don't think we can do that. Not without legal advice. I'm sorry, Commissioner Lindsay. Well, Junior? what we did, like Commissioner Russell mentioned, is uh, stated that as a last resort. Um, it's just hard to follow for sure if all your council members are on the same page or not. I think we are all on the same page. We all voice the same opinion. You heard that tonight. So Every you're single all one of us in the generality to condemnation of the property. That's correct. We are. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Junior, did you have something to say? Okay. Because I saw you shaking your head. <laughs> I just didn't think I didn't feel comfortable with a formal vote. Um, we're all on the same page. We all know that condemnation is not what we want to see our property owners have to go through. And Robert, I would hope that you would come to some kind of reasonable solution for these property owners so they don't lose their businesses and they don't have their land condemned. Does that make sense? That does make sense and I, I would agree with that. It okay, is thank you. Not, not to condemn anyway. Okay. We do not need any property condemned in our town. I don't want that name um, among us at all and I don't think you do either. So let's um, move on. Do we ever ha we have any other comments? Okay. Yes. Thank you for the, go ahead. Yes. This is Juan Almaguer the third. Um, I'm the owner of a small truck company, and uh, I'm happy that we are here in Boardman right now. And these power lines, if they do come in, we would lose a substantial amount of uh, of land in our parking, and we would uh, it would be feel like they were pushing us out. Uh, and so I just wanted to make my comment. Uh, to, to please look for an alternate route to, so we can stay in Boardman and uh, um, you know we really like the community and we're not looking to move out and we'd hate to be pushed out. Okay, thank you Juan. All right, Mayor so we're going to move. Did somebody Mayor else have? Yes. Yes, um, Mary Killian would like to comment on the issue as well. Okay. Mary? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate this. Um, I would like to say I have read Robert Eckerd Rhodes' testimony to the PUC. He has named the city of Boardman and the Port of Morrow as the reason why he wants to have access through um, Fletcher Hobbs' property. So therefore, I think it does sit on you guys, the onus is on you, to make a call and a decision regarding this. And I think you should take a stance and you should write a letter to the PUC. Um, Fletcher Hobbs is an outstanding member of our community and our county, and he has a lot to offer, not just in the business sense. I know that there are options available for UEC to go forward without condemning this property, and I don't know why they have reached this point where they just aren't exploring them, but take my word for it, there's nothing on record showing that they are further exploring other options about where they are available. And that's on them. And we, you guys as a council, individually and collectively, need to take a stand for the city of Boardman and for the greater good of Morrow County. Thank you, Mary. And we did say we were going to. So we already discussed that we were going to write a letter. We just need legal consultant on how we're going to write the letter. It will happen, though. Just so you know. Um, I'm, I'm sure that, I don't, I think that maybe we should have a motion on the floor for to, to direct count, um, staff to collect the information to write the letter to the PUC for a formal um, 
formal statement to not condemn the property owner's property. Karen, is that how we should state the, the motion? Karen? If, I think if you just, I'm not sure why you want to make a motion. I think you should direct the staff to uh, compose a letter and send it out to the council, you know, for their approval or their input. And then we, before we would send it off to the BUC. Okay. So I agree we, with we, that. Because I'll, I'll talk to the attorneys and set them off. Okay. So does everybody agree with that? Just raise your hand. Agreed. Okay, great. So you've been directed, Karen. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for all your input. We really appreciate it. Um, I love the, the the great discussion. And just like any other time, please always feel free to come to council to discuss your issues. Um, next, we have Tori from the chamber. Hi, Tori. Hello, how are you? Hi, how are you? So um, I just have a few things to kind of give some updates on. Uh, Chamber Luncheon, we're working to have it outside again on July 15th. It's going to be at the Marker 40. Uh, Cater is going to be Burntfield Brewing. Uh, RSVP and prepaid is required to attend so we can get a firm number so we can um, get people social distance correctly and be within this meet the state guidelines. Um, if we do only have a few people attending, we will probably end up canceling the luncheon just for cost reasons and time. And we will switch over to having it be a Facebook live event instead. And our speakers will be um, giving their update and information then. So, but we will notify those who have re re uh, pre registered for the luncheon prior to Wednesday of the change. Um, reminder that House District 57 Town Hall with Representative Greg Smith is Thursday. That's this Thursday, July 9th from 5.30 to 6.30. Um, you're welcome to join in on the Zoom meeting. Login information can be found on our Facebook page under the, um, on the, we put it as a picture on there, but it's also going to be on our website. You can go into our events calendar and click it and you can find the login information for that. Uh, Bourbon Food Pantry General Meeting is July 8th from 7 to 8 p.m. at the First Baptist Church if you'd like to join in on that. And um, just a reminder that the Chamber Office continues to stay closed to the public. Staff has continued to work on the office during these times. Um, if you're needing anything from us, you can email or call us. Um, and the rest of this remaining part of the week, uh, we are having new phone systems put in. And so if we missed your calls, we're very sorry about that. We apologize for the inconvenience. You can either email us or call me on my cell and we'll be working through that process um, as quickly as we can. So that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Tori. Any, any questions? Any questions for Tori? All right, thank you, Tori. Have a good night. Thank you. you too. Any other public comments? before we move on to the rest of the agenda. Okay, we're gonna move on to um, other business. First other business is the bids for the towing RFP. We got no towing bids. No one wants to tow police or police tag cars away, huh? No, we didn't receive anybody that was interested. So we'll just have to continue to do what we're doing and call whoever's available. Okay. Um, the MCURD, what is that? that? That's McCurd. That's what we call McCurd. And in your packet, I just put in there just for your interest, uh, this last year, what uh, what they spent there. I, because there's so many new people that are interested all in our packets and our meetings now that um, the Morrow County Unified Rec District is what we call McCurd. And so I put in there the what the things they are going to sponsor this next year, provided that we all can still have community of and uh, because they're they're very generous the city of Boardman they uh, will have uh, they'll give us thirty thousand for our fireworks next year and they try to help out lots of places in the County. So I just thought you'd be interested in that. That's great. Thank you. 
Huh? Next is the League of Oregon Cities. Yes, I put that in there because, you know, I told you the last meeting that you needed to, uh, there was a questionnaire that the League had sent out and that they would like it back in by the 7th of August. Well, all then they... Oh, I forgot all about that. They emailed this part, but then they mailed me the physical part that has the other pages that I've included in your packet that give you the, like, kind of like the pros and cons or why you would want to, like, why beer and cider tax increase would be important. And so it tells you what the legislation is and kind of the background. And I would hope that you would kind of read through this because it, sometimes you think you know what that might mean. And I was surprised when I read it that it wasn't what I thought they were asking us about. Because next meeting or before, I would like to send this in to the, and maybe we can just poll or something, but I'd like to send it in to the. Uh, can you send that out? I'm sorry, what? Can you send that out to us again, Karen? Can you send that out to us again? I don't rem it's I remember getting it, but I. It's in your packet. Is it, it in our packet? Okay. Or, okay, I do. Yeah. I would approve A and B, and it goes from Mr. A to Beagle? B. Mr. Beagle? Oh, Mr. Beagle, did you have something? He's on mute. Band. Yeah. So Mr. Anyway. Beagle, you're on mute. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm not on mute, am I? I'm talking. Go ahead. I have a question for Karen. Yes. Um, I, I read through that with the uh, the acronyms and all the meanings. I understand it that the city of Boardman is to select not all, but some of those that are more important to us uh, being a member of the League of Cities. Is that not correct? Yes. That's why they're okay. asking us. That's why they send this out. They want to know from smaller towns and bigger towns what's important to us. And we picked four of the issues that we consider that we'd like the legislation legislators to work on. Okay. And when we when we select the four, um, we being you and the city council, I presume, uh, can you disseminate the choices out to the general public so that if they have a, an opinion, they can also voice a concern? You mean send it out before we do the vote? Well, if, if you're going to select the four, you and, and the city council and the mayor and, and the people that make the selection, can, we, can you not uh, inform like the individuals that are participating in this meeting now, can you forward to them the same method that you use to forward the minutes? So that we are aware of what the choices are. It can be on. The, we could put that on the website. Yes, so, on the city website. Heather, are are the uh, are the packets on our website or is just the agenda? Just the agenda. Okay. Okay. No, then we'll send it. Uh, we'll post it on our website so that whoever's interested can go and. Uh, have access to it. Okay. I would like to know how to do that when it comes up. If you could forward that information to me, Heather, I'd appreciate it. Okay. I would need your email if I wasn't there, if you aren't going to go on the website. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I said I would need your email address if, if you aren't going to go on the website. Otherwise, I'll have Jackie put it on the website. Um, I believe I believe Karen and Jackie both have my email address. All right. I emailed him a candidate packet. Oh, sure. Okay, thanks. Then uh, Marta just uh, did up the uh, our system development charges that we <clears throat> have done this last year or two. And so she we just put that in the packet so you can kind of look and see you know, like that we're waiving a lot of those uh, fees, but 
whenever we have a big, you know, like the apartment house or something like that, then they, then they end up uh, having to pay some of the, some of their C charges. So, and then uh, we, uh, the city and BCDA and the chamber are all working together to sit and we put the grant in, in the city's name to try to get some funding for the broadband. Uh, you know, now the state has quite a lot of money that they are uh, willing to try to disperse to the communities. And so we thought we would try to get uh, some money for uh, our broadband area. And we put a, uh, a map in here that shows you uh, the, the first map. The second map is where all of the area that uh, we are now trying to cover. And I understand that they have the signal from the one up on Kincaid working. And they do. And I guess I don't know about the one on the fire station, but the people that have hooked up to the one on Kincaid are really happy because they say they're getting, you know, like really hundred in and a hundred out, which like to me, I don't know what that means, but I'm happy for somebody that has more than three. So I just wanted you to know that we were applying for that grant. Hopefully we'll get uh, some money. And that's the other business, so. Junior, I'm, did you have a question? Huh? I was just gonna ask Karen for a little clarification on the map. I, I'm not sure that I understand um, what the outlined red area is. Are you talking about that, that, okay, the line that go, is supposed to go down through like the old part of uh, Boardman? Yeah. Correct, yeah. so if, I, if I'm looking at the broadband complete, there's the area that's been omitted from that. And on the secondary map, it shows it kind of with the red around Boardman Avenue to Columbia Avenue. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if, if that, is that just area that doesn't get any coverage or is that uh, something else? Lisa's here, yeah. and so I'm going to let her help you with that map. Sure, thank you, Junior. And Rick just gave me a copy of a map that's in black and white, so. Um, <laughs> I know your question, honestly, is about the around the loop, correct? Yes. Okay. So the the northwest part of Boardman, that whole loop area, is very dense with housing, and it has the opportunity to have a fiber to the home project instead of a fiber to a pole to a wireless system um, application. So we have included the cost of a fiber to the home project for this designated neighborhood. Um, I don't know how much we will get funded and I know a lot of this neighborhood has some kind of coverage now and there are areas of town that have zero coverage still but um, I think that this uh, project application all of the COVID applications are turning around very quickly. And so I would expect that within 10 days, we're going to know whether this is successful or not, because they want these projects in order to apply for this money, the project had to be completed by December 30 of this year. And so I'm hopeful, I'm always hopeful. I'm hopeful that uh, the community of Boardman who's already completed the broadband study would be um, looked on successfully for funding to get this project done because we can get it done by December 30. Thank you very much. I appreciate the clarification. That was clarification. Good stuff. Any other and questions? I, I've got people sending me screenshots of their up and down um, and everyone that I've talked to that is hooked up so far is very happy with it. Yeah. 
I don't think it reaches to my house, and you did forgot to send me an email so I could find out. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Beeler? Eagle, I mean. Go ahead. Got a question for the young lady. Um, if the schools do not open for uh, going to the three schools that we have, do we have enough with this broadband to support each individual student? Uh, I'm talking what, uh, 400 students, maybe 500 doing online work? Would there be enough broadband for all of that? That is certainly the plan, Mr. Beagle. Um, you can see on uh, the one map in the packet where those poles are located. And there's a series of rings and double coverage. To right on the south side. It, it just gets the city limits, though. Um, but I can tell you that the Community Development Association is still committed to working on areas outside of the city limits to cover our rural residents as well. Um, it's, it's a harder project because it's different technology, um, because there, there's uh, fewer residents for poll. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Any other questions? All right. Um, we're going to move on to the police report, Chief. Uh, I'll just keep it real short. I gave my packet away, but uh, everybody should have a copy of the uh, uh, police report for the month. Understand that those numbers are flexible. Um, we're back to the, the uh, uh, I sent Butch home uh, for his safety uh, based on the amount of cases that are uh, arising in the county. So um, those numbers are going to change when he gets back. Uh, but I, I wanted to get out a report to you. Just know that those numbers are going to change. Uh, aside you. from that, aside from that, we're we're still conducting business as usual. Um, you will see that. Uh, um, I've required all of my staff to, when they respond to a call or they engage uh, with the public, they're supposed to be wearing uh, PPE. Um, and so far, I think that's working. We're finding some issues with it, such as uh, our glasses tend to fog up because of the mask and then we can't see what we're doing, but uh, we're, we're trying to find out ways to make it work. Other Thank than that, you. Any questions? All right, Karen, did you have a city manager report? No, I had one thing I was going to tell you, and now I, let's see, oh, I know. I was going to tell you that I don't think that our attorney is on the, I meant to tell you this in the very beginning. Our attorney had another meeting tonight, and he was going to join us if that one ended. I gave him the executive session number and the regular number. Okay. Thank you. Counselors, anything to report? No, nope. and I have nothing. So um, we're going to close our. Wait, oh, go ahead, Brandon. Sandy, sorry. Yeah, are we okay. going to We're not close. We're not closing the meeting yet, are we? No, we're going to go into re or to um, recess and go into executive session um, under ORS one ninety two dot six six zero two. I and personnel and we have a separate link for that so we're all going to be all the counselors are going to be signing off and going to the separate link because it is our own link and um, we're also going to be discussing Oregon statute ORS 192.6602 e real estate I'm not sure how long this is going to take because it is um, our city managers eval and because we're all giving our opinions and writing it down and keeping track, it could take us 45 minutes. So we will convene, we'll reconvene the city council meeting after we are done. So at this time, we're going to recess the regular city council meeting and go into executive session. Okay. Madam Mayor. Yes. Because, uh, uh, because we're going to use the camera here, I'm going to have to end this meeting um, okay. and then start a new one. Otherwise, the camera will broadcast in both meetings. So. Okay, great. Okay.
We're now coming back from the executive session and it is 9.35. Um, we're resuming the regular council meeting. And I think that um, we came out with um, wanting to do a, a, a motion. So Brandon or David, did you wanna do that motion or? Yeah, I will. So I'd like to make a motion that we write a letter uh, opposing the condemnation of any property along those lines. And I'll second that. Okay, so it's been moved by Brandon and seconded by David to write a letter to the PUC Commission um, in, um, how, do, how do I word that? Refusing for um, condemnation for the property um, along the property owner's lines. I think that, it has to be. I think it has to be an opposition. Opposition. And, okay. I'm sure that Karen as, will get the legal as a last choice. Okay. Okay. So all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion passes. Six and one absent. So thank you, Council. We had a very good Council meeting tonight. And we haven't gone that late in a long time. <laughs> it's past my let's, bedtime. Let's not do that again. I know, right? <laughs> Is there anything else you guys want to add? Karen, you want to add anything? No, I think All right. Well, it was a good meeting. Thank you for everybody's participation tonight. Um, have a good one. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.